Just a few feet from the burial shaft K-24, workers are carefully excavating a new discovery. A two and a half thousand year old mud brick structure whose unusual layout Ramadan has seen once before. Some 10 miles to the north of Saqqara, beneath the pyramids of Giza, is a beautifully decorated tomb belonging to a high-ranking official called Kar. I haven't been here for almost 10 years, but the scenes and the decoration of these tombs are all in my mind all these years, especially that scene here. In the middle of a depiction of Carr's funeral procession is what's brought Ramadan here, one of the few surviving illustrations of an ibu, or embalming tent. An ibu is a temporary tent made for the deceased for the purpose of purification during the bombification process. And we know that this structure is called Ibu because Egyptians like to label everything. And here's what we have is the word for Ibu. The reed leaf with the free E, and then the leg is for the B sound, and then the quail check is for the U. So what you read here is Ibu. What's so striking about the Ibu, though, is its shape. So this rectangular structure right here is what makes an ibu, but the main thing in it is that ramp in the middle and the two equal rooms on the sides. And what I have here is a 3D scan of our new structure with a ramp in the middle and two equal rooms or spaces on the sides. So I am 100% sure that what we have in Saqqara is an ibu. If Ramadan is right, and the structure at Saqqara is an ibu, where the bodies of customers like Didi Bastet were purified and preserved, then the site should hold more clues. Back at Saqqara, Ramadan and mummification expert Stephen Buckley are investigating I mean, what interests me is both the layout and what you found. They're looking for evidence of a crucial process that it's thought took place inside the ibu. Having removed the internal organs and used the resins and the incense, now it's the key aspect of the mummification, which is the use of the natron, this uh, special, magical, if you like, salt that was so crucial to the preservation of the body. Natron salt was used by Egyptian embalmers to stop the body from decomposing. And one theory is that it was applied using some form of bath. The thing is interesting. I mean, what intrigues me is, is that depression there. From my point of view, this would be the place where they were treating the body with natron. And I think if this had been waterproofed at some point, Mm -hmm. um, then a body would fit in this space very nicely, mm -hmm. and that would work perfectly mm -hmm. with the natron bath to uh, produce a very well mummified individual. Music to my ears. This is fantastic because the question is often asked of me, I've done the experiments, I've shown how it was done, mm -hmm. but where, where was it done? <laughs> yeah. That's always been asked, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I haven't had an answer We've very until now. Fantastic, wonderful to hear that. This combination of an underground workshop for the removal of internal organs and an ibu, a tent in which the body was preserved and embalmed, is a groundbreaking discovery. 
as it's evidence of a hugely sophisticated approach to mummification. We always know about the procedures of mummification from taxis and also scenes, but this is the first time we have different structures where mummification and the preparation of the mummies took place. This is very rare. In fact, it's totally unique, which is why it will allow scholars like Ramadan to build the most accurate picture yet of how ancient Egyptians buried their dead. But for now, Ramadan has a more pressing mystery to solve. Why Didi Bastet was buried with so many canopic jars. The ancient Egyptians wanted to tell us a story. They wanted to leave everything they believed in in a burial chamber like this, on the floor, around the coffin. It is our job now to decode this particular context and explain it to everybody.